you arrived at the um, at the back door. <laughs> You arrived at her back door. This is a, this is true. Um, and her back door wasn't what it was like. Obviously, she wanted us at the front door because she was very house proud, and that, the front door had like flowers. And yeah. It was still laughing. Yeah. And, yeah. And, um, and That's the level very, tonight. Very, I mean, she was like, she's house proud. She, she was like looking for this. Like, oh, hello, magazine. Okay, magazine. Mm. She was just, no, no, no. But instead of saying, oh, it's just like, like, hi, Lou, come in. That was quite good, I thought it was... Can you do Devin McGee? No, no I can't. I, <laughs> no, I'm not going to try. I, I want to hear your Joe Wick, so we'll get on to that. Oh, Sorry, right, go on. Right, right, right. So she said, she said, you're building the wrong, you go, go round to the front door, you're in the wrong door. In a faintly unfriendly fashion. Mm. That's going in the program. <laughs> But I, I enjoyed your relationship in that one because it felt like there wasn't, isn't there? There's a moment that Paul's like, oh, Louis, just trying to get in your pants. And, you know, was there a conscious flirtation there or was it just sort of. Uh, I try um, never to flirt either in my private life <laughs> or in my TV life. Yep. And, and when I do try, it invariably goes bad. <laughs> I think in TV, I, it's, I think it's pretty uncomfortable to sort of. Um, I think it's okay to be flirted with, uh, and, 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 and not to sound really pious, but I just, I'm so resistant to being um, that guy, you know, mm. or that sort of like, I love, love, and I want to make it. <laughs> um, always to a fault, and I remember when I, one of my, when I, you know, the, the second episode of Weird Weekend, my first TV show, uh, solo TV outing, was about the porn industry, and I had so much anxiety about what am I going to do in these situations where will I end up looking like a creep or a pervert? Like I just don't want to be. And then occasionally, like, you know, you're on a porn set, and then the, you know, the woman's like, one of the women's like, look at my new breasts, and she pulled, she pulled her top, top off. Wow. Sort of Sorry, not wow, but. <laughs> Sorry. And, and I just I became rigid with fear. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't, don't look down, don't let your eyes even go down slightly. So, so I, I think in general, like, that whole, no, flirting on mm. she, but, but Debbie's shtick, if I can put it that way, was to sort of be, be a little bit flirtatious. Mm, mm. I, try, I tried not to um, reciprocate that. <laughs> <laughs> and a similar sort of thing, I felt like you were maybe a bit in the lion's den with, you know, like Christine Hamilton right. as well. It felt like there was maybe, you were, you were kind of preyed upon by these old... Well, it would be very ungentlemanly like to, to put it down. Sorry. But, but um, yeah, when, I, yeah, when Louis met the Hamiltons, which is the weirdest, probably in documentaries, you're always looking for um, the unexpected, some moment of happenstance that's kind of odd or revealing. And in that one, Neil and Christine Hamilton were retired politicians and just sort of applying a, a low wattage celebrity circuit. And, and when they, while we were filming, and, and increasingly aware that the filming was not going very well, nothing much was happening, and suddenly they were accused of indecent assault at the swingers' party. Mm, mm. <laughs> you know, I hate, I hate it when that happens. Yeah. <laughs> and then there was a media siege, and then we, they, they sort of drank, well, she, Christine drank her way through it, and I just sort of drank my way through it. <laughs> I found it immensely stressful because I was still inside the, 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 their house, like, instead of throwing me out, which, you know, one level, I suppose, would have been the more sensible. I don't know, it's a hard one to call, isn't it? Anyway, they decided to keep building. And uh, so me and Will, my director, stayed in the house as the media kind of were stationed outside for three or four days. It was August, so it was the biggest, silly season, biggest, it was the biggest story in the country. And then Christine began, or would say, like, coming on to me. But, <laughs> but, but it was a very odd dynamic where she sort of draped herself on me. Wow. Couple, and, and, yeah. And it's just silly, darling, isn't it? We're just being friendly. Yes, I suppose we are. What's Neil doing at this point? Is yeah. he just chill? He was just there. He was on the other side of the room, kind of looking over, and then he did sort of mm. weird, just sort of like. <laughs> like that. But my read of him was like, oh, she's doing that thing again. <laughs> doing what she does, just knocking the guests. <laughs> <laughs> so, not that any actual snogging took place. No, no. That's on the records. Um, what other catchphrases have you got? Is that, yeah, can we, is, is, is that right? Is that right's a big one? Did, we, did I, I do that? I really said that. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think you might have said that. 
I, you, you'd be like, so, you'd say something like, um, you know, a lot of people say that you're kind of, you know, a bit crazy. I mean, is, is that right? Is that a fair characterization? Uh, yeah. I suppose. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, what I'm aware of is the times when I'm conscious of impersonating myself it is actually the most sort of unlooked at part of documentary making, but in a way, the part that I find I stress over the most, which is reading the commentary or the, or the voiceover, which is written. And so you can tell totally, we haven't used it in Norman, but people like Alan Wicker or, or others were famous for their dry and witty VO voiceover. And I've always tried to use as little as possible, and I try not to score points, you know, or be sarcastic. It seems a bit cheap if you're mean in voiceover. Mm. But at the same time, you want it to have a little modicum of wit, and then the intonations. So sometimes I'm aware of using the same phrases and using the same intonations. I don't know, have you noticed any of those? I've noticed you, you, lo you seem to really enjoy, uh, is it, it Weltschmerz in your book? And um, laconic. No, I would never use the word Weltschmerz yeah. in the commentary because it would be too pompous a word. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to have to de pompousify. Yeah. I should. <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit pretentious and I like using long words in conversation, but actually, really, I would rather just use normal language. Yeah. And, and for some reason, sometimes. A Cessopodalian word. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm following that, yeah. I know. One very distinct laugh. <laughs> the one person who knows what Cessopodalian yeah, means. Yeah. One intellectual uh, you narcissist. You know what Cessopodalian means. Go on, you're you, not. What is it? <laughs> Do you know? Uh, a word with many, many syllables. Many syllables, yeah. Polysyllabic would be syllable. <laughs> Very well done. Okay. Very well done. Uh, and so one of mine is, uh, what do you think of I, you know, with my time in the world of Josh Berry, yeah. really done, I had a few more questions to ask before, so that's one of them. Yeah. <laughs> what a privilege I've just been given. <laughs> I never thought those words would be uttered in, that's amazing, wow, sorry, that's, I really I liked that. Josh Perry for several minutes. I was beginning to wonder. And then it was like, <laughs> No, don't stop. Please don't say it's amazing. There was any direction to this question. Ah, don't oh, thanks for applauding that. That's great. So the management consultant was like, oh yeah, get him, Louis, get him. <laughs> Not bad. I know, I see you. So I try and, you know, when you've made like 50 or 60 programs, uh, and you know, as much as each of them is supposed to be original and unique and different, you find yourself, you know, once you find a phrase that solves a problem for you, it's a temptation to come back to it. Mm. Uh, this is sort of inviting you to study the program to see how much of it is sort of repetition and, and actually um, slightly just like, Slapped in, together. I, I do I, like I, the. I, I, would I, I like the idea of living rent, rent free in your head, though. That is a nice. That's a nice feeling. Exactly. Have we done the, the, the catchphrases? I feel like I should be I paying you for the uh, audience <laughs> feedback. I feel like that's pretty much all of them, you know. But well, you, have you noticed that certainly in the, like the thirty or so specials I did after the when Louis met, it was like. I was spending time in the world of Josh Sharon. Or for several minutes, I have been spending time in the world of Josh Sharon. A respected and admired uh, impressionist and very popular on social media. He was nevertheless controversial and was causing waves <laughs> to everyone's taste. <laughs> and so I decided to join him on stage to find out the truth about the man of a thousand voices. Uh, look at that. Look at that. God. They all, all follow up with three sentences. The first one is I'm spending time. The second one is there's some kind of dilemma here. And the third one is I'm going to find out what the truth is. Wow. I want to put the transcript of that on my tombstone. Oh my. That'll be a gravestone. I'm not going to be in a tomb. Um, <laughs> I'm interested in the comment you make in your in your book in Through the Keyhole. Thank um, you for the plug. Yeah. More recent book, as opposed to Gotta Get Through This, yes. the previous one, the memoir. <laughs> but I can't just 
Marshall was very keen to remove the pun, but I think it confused everyone a bit. Or says he's just got the same joke. It must be the same book. <laughs> was that reflected in the sales? Pretty much. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm really interested, you say to your mum, you're talking about Lenny Henry and uh, Rose McGowan, I think, interviewing both of them, and your mum's like, oh, I really I like Lenny Henry. I did interview them for my podcast, Grammar. Yeah, and your mum says, oh, I really like the Lenny Henry one, and you're like, oh, I don't know, I don't like Cozy, I like Fractious. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I said, well, what about the Rose McGowan? I really did my mum as well. But the public is just saying, my mum sounds like Josh doing the impression of me. Yeah. I'm not so sure about the Rose McGowan one. Well, I'm like, what is there's something about her I didn't really know. And, and I said, oh, well, I, you know, but the Lenny Henry one, that was fun. Oh, I liked that. That was lovely. I loved the Lenny Henry. I'm going to be weird. You're going sort of <laughs> verging into David Mitchell's sort of territory, yeah. and then the nasal. You know? No, I didn't like that. That was shit. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, she, and I said, I don't like cozy, I like fractures, which is great. And uh, a couple of people picked up on that, including Adam Buxton asked me about that. They used it as a sort of premise. It's like, so let's do some fractures stuff now, shall we? <laughs> um, but I did it, what I was, I think it was a classic case of, I don't know if I'm like you, but basically, when I'm with my mum, she sometimes brings out my most. How do I put this? Irritable side. <laughs> I love her so much. Mm. I find that I'm not always my best self around her. Sure. And so I, I, I was feeling just sort of argumentative. So when she said cozy, I was like, no, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Whereas, of course, I like cozy and I like a bit of fractures as well. But there must be a sort of enjoy because I feel like I loathe conflict in any type of fractious interaction. Um, but you know, when you're interacting with Scientologists or when you're interacting with people who are really like winding you up, are you enjoying that? I feel like most people would be hating that process. But do you get enjoyment it's from it? It's complicated. I think um, I'm, I, I never sort of really go out to seek uh, seek, seek conflict. I just a bit like you, maybe like a lot of British people. I don't know. Maybe like a lot of humans. I, I'm, I'm sort of uh, conflict averse, and um, and I really do try and get along with people. And at the same time, if someone's sort of irrationally grumpy, I find that quite amusing. As long as it doesn't feel like it's anything I've particularly done wrong, hmm. you know. I, 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 so I'm not, I'm not antagonising people on purpose, but. And then there's times where it's just un uncomfortable, but you sort of know that it's going to work for the film. Like I remember doing an interview with a guy. Any time someone flips out and um, puts their hand over the, the camera lens, you know that's good. And by the way, <laughs> if you're ever interviewed, interviewed by our doorstep by you know, Donald McIntyre or Paul Kenyon or indeed by my good self, right? A, a little word is like, it just never looks good uh, for public relations reasons when you try and put your hand, it just it's sort of like automatic guilt, you know, like putting that, yeah. the telegraph's like, don't look at me, I'm guilty, yeah. I'm guilty. <laughs> and I did an interview with this guy, who was called Pete Warren, he was a Seth Epican, there you go, thank you. Um, <laughs> and uh, he, he, he was a lion breeder, and I was saying to him, I said, but you know, you breed these lions, and then they just release into a caged area. Like, not a small, but a fairly large, but basically a caged area, so some bloke can come and shoot them. And he goes, um, yes, but if some people want to do that, it's a sport, and that's what they do. And I said, yeah, but is it really a sport? I mean, they're caged up. If it's a sport, it's like tennis without a net. <laughs> <laughs> And he said, that, you've asked me that fucking question 15 times. <laughs> and then he put his shot in his hand over. You don't, when you go out, I hate fucking elephants. They don't eat the knife, the shitty bush. They go out, they eat the knife bush. And he went and went on this weird rant about, you know, how everyone's trying to save these animals and the animals are all fuckers, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and, and, and you know, some people, you know, you want to go and hunt in here. With not everyone can have a nice big car. Some people have to have a shitty little car. And he was basically saying, like, to eat, to shoot a, a lion like, in a small fenced enclosure was like driving a shitty car, right? Some people, and so they've only got money for that. But like, the point was, was, I had an immediate reaction, like, oh shit, he's really angry, and he might punch me. And then he went for the camera, and then, he, and then, and then it was like a rodeo. We're like, okay, no, he's not. He's not going to punch me. We've just got an awkward moment, and this is going to be good for the film. Which is a long answer to your question, but basically it's complicated, but it can be mm. quite enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> it 
it feels like it's a sort of legitimate part of the encounter. Mm. So you don't mind as much if they maybe dislike you by the end? I would rather they, you know, like, I would rather they liked me and I would rather they were happy with the film. You know, this is, is going to make me sound probably needy, which should be further from the truth. <laughs> Just between me and myself. <laughs> um, uh, people make it sound needy as opposed to the totally robust and, and, and self-possessed and healthy human specimen that I am. Sure. Um, but when I hear, like, if I've made a film about um, Nazis uh, at the end of it, and you make, and then they see it, and it, they're like, oh, well, I think you did a pretty good job of making us look like a bunch of weirdos. Well, what is wrong with you? Can't you see the truth? Can't you see where society is going? And then a little part of you is thinking like, oh, what could be my life? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the thing is, part is like, well, well, yeah, of course, like, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. But another part is society being like, well, come on at all. <laughs> that's interesting. I mean, have you ever come close to to like losing it with a with a you know contributor? I, there's there's a moment in the Westboro Baptist Church one, and I think he's he's talking about how Jews killed Jesus, and you're like, newsflash, brainiac, Jesus was Jewish. Um, Did you have that your sleeve? Yeah, I was ready. I was ready to bring it out. Newsflash, brainiac. I mean, Jewish people were involved because he was living in a Jewish area. That was like. <laughs> I, don't, I think I think you sound a bit more like this. But what was your question about? Oh, did I lose my shit? No, no. I, I, my dander was up, but I was I was mildly vexed. Right? I left the vocal scale, but the emotions just Louis the roof. So like he goes, he goes like imperturbable. Like mild, mildly vexed, you know, all the way to. Oh, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. To so like John Sweeney, maybe. John Sweeney, yeah, Paul Sweeney. <laughs> you were not there, Tommy! <laughs> I'm not a bigot! Look it up on YouTube if you haven't, it is gold. So I don't get it. Scientologists uh, wound me up. I think it's just because they specialize in button pushing. In fact, that's more or less. A skill, uh, you know, you train in bull baiting, that's the technical term. How to wind, we, you know, we call it just being a wind up merchant. You're just needling them. Is that what you do? Any other impressions? What's wrong with you, Judge Could you only do one person? What kind of impressionist are you? And if I just kept going like that, yeah. until you exploded. So, what with me? You're, you're trespassing, you need to leave, I'm going to call the cops, you're trespassing. You need to leave. I'm going to call it, and I'm like, I'm not trespassing. <laughs> I'm, not trespassing. <laughs> I'm not trespassing. There we go. So different. Yeah, I, th <laughs> I think you do sound a bit more like this one, to be honest. Just, just you is that, no? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not trespassing. <laughs> and, and actually, uh, I found myself like being personally attacked and accused. I seem to have a limitless tolerance for like generalized hate, <laughs> specifically directed at me. I'm less comfortable with it. Yeah. <laughs> we were going to do, you were asking me if I was going to do, because I've got a couple of impressions. Yeah, you do Joe Wicks, right? Well... You do a good Joe Wicks. No, not really. I liked I enjoyed it. Joe, Joe Wicks, I got in trouble for because I was asked about lockdown, this was two years ago, and they said, how's it all going in lockdown? I think I was promoting my podcast, and they said, well, I'll be keeping it together. Been doing a lot of Joe Wicks uh, since lockdown started. I've been doing those daily exercises. God, I'm so in my own head with like, oh, I'm going to do my list. So I sort of say like, oh, God, help me out. What is this happening? I thought, well, well I was like, okay. come on, silly me. <laughs> Yeah. Because I'd seen him punch himself while he was doing the next one. Look at my darling. Yeah. Yeah. It's like Joe's crossed with Alan Carr. Yeah, yeah. But it was very good. Look at my darling. And then it's going even higher. Yeah, yeah. Look at my sausage. Which I heard him say, silly sausage and look at my darling. I just sort of went to the moon with it. Yeah. And then I heard, I can't remember how, I think I was doing exercises and then, 
And then he says, oh, I have a little bit to you can catch it. I said, look at my thumb. And I was like, I have to stop exercising. And he was talking to me. And then I reached out to him. And, and, and I think I was interviewed on his podcast. I said, I'm really sorry that I did that weird impression of you. I'm not an impressionist. And he's like, no, no, it's fine. I didn't like <laughs> But you see, you see the anxiety. It requires me to keep doing the horrible. I think it's good. That's what else he's doing. It doesn't that. sound like that. But he's like, wallet, as he likes saying that. Ah, oh, wallet, look at all this buckly I got. Look at this buckly. I'm looking at his own What's his name? Nicky. He's got away. Who else is calling in? Have we got? Have we got? I'm going to do it. I love Joe. We've been filming with him. He's brilliant. I do Joe. It's still do it five days a week. I was supposed to do it today anyway. Whatever. Normally I think I did it this morning, but I did it. But, um, <laughs> but I, I love his exercises. But he was so funny in the lockdown when he started. He had a million, and then if you kept with it, like in October of 2020, that dark time, it went down to like 20 or 30 thousand. Like he lost 950 thousand. <laughs> wow. I think it's really good. Uh, I'm on the, uh, you, uh, Uri Geller. Do you find your WhatsApp to do a lot? <laughs> Not me personally. I keep getting his WhatsApp from because I met him a couple of times. Hello, Uri. Uh, <laughs> or, or, or I think I'm on some weird media influencer group. Hello, Uri. I just did a little fantastic view. <laughs> And I'm like, that was the reason. Is that what he said? Yeah. I'm going to get in the ring with Tyson Fury. Because I went and um, I interviewed him for a program I did with Michael Jackson, not with really about Michael Jackson. Yeah. I'm sorry, Louis, I'm not going to ditch you with Michael. I interviewed Martin, I let Martin talk to Michael. I didn't think it would be appropriate. I think you talk to losers. And you talk to people who kind of, I mean, you, he's got a way of like needling you. It's kind of, I didn't respect your interviewing style. Well, that really hurt. I've got to find Ben Spoons for a living. Talk to me about he doesn't respect my style. I'm sorry, but I'm not having that. And then I can say, I said, all right, fine. Do you want to come and see a bit of Rolls Royce covered in spoons? I'm like, fine, whatever. <laughs> We went out and I'm not going to bed this food for you, just to get that out of the place. I'm like, okay, fine. <laughs> and up there, at the end of my land, another way, and I looked up and said, up there, up there by the tree. I'm like, okay, my spoon is bending. And then I looked at him, <laughs> and he had a spoon that was bending. And it was, the, the misdirection was so obvious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Look over there. <laughs> Wow. But you've got you've got John Ronson as well. You do a pretty good. I don't good. do it. I've got you too loves me, Louis. Yeah. I I mean, John, <laughs> John is a friend. What, what is it? What is it? It's, it's hard to do. I'm sorry. John, how would you do John? It's like, a phrase. I was the culture wars and fighting for dominance. It's, it's, That's what it is. Me. John Ronson. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he doesn't choose strange words to land on. Yeah, he'll be like, this person said that I was a mental idiot and I should <laughs> fuck off and die for being a mental idiot. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to tell you about that. <laughs> I'm going to tell you about something else happening somewhere else. <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of got a brilliant this exposition, is, but once you notice it, it's like, but this is over there, and I'm over here. Yeah, okay, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> you guys had some professional jealousy, right, in the early uh, well, days, John, is that right? John, I'm an admirer of John's going back like, to the very early days. And um, early on, people said to me, but, but before, actually, I first cottoned on to him in 95 or 96. And I, my first off in TV was 94. And, and, and a couple of friends said, like, oh, the stuff you're doing is good. It's a bit like that guy. I'm like, which guy? I'm like, oh, I can't remember his name. He did that Ronson mission. And so later on, I found this stuff. I like, thought it was really good. But I had, and then I, after that, I was like, man, this guy's amazing. Like, this is weird. You know, it's just weird inflections and this fascination with marginal subjects. Um, 
And I even thought about writing my fan letter at one time, but then I went off, I don't know, that gets a laugh. You know, <laughs> you know, it's so odd that when you see something like, oh, I'm really responding to that, I want the Prince was another, and then you wrote a fan letter to Prince, Rods and Prince. What a strange little Venn diagram that is people who you threw thought about maybe writing a fan letter to. Have you written them to anyone? I, I wrote one fan letter in my life. Go on. You don't, you don't even know who this guy is. And I did it because I was asked to, which does it make it a fan letter, I don't know. But basically, I used to, um, I used to love uh, African music, and specifically Zimbabwean music, and I used to listen to a DJ called Andy Kershaw, and there was a Zimbabwean artist called John Chibadura. Does anyone think that's so niche, isn't it? John Chibadura, he had, a, he had some amazing tracks, and he was coming, he was thinking of coming to the UK to talk. He wasn't even a full-time musician. He was a shoe salesman who also recorded music. And um, this anecdote will be cut from the whole <laughs> version of this. Yeah, what happens at the end? Basically, I was, Andy Kershaw said, John's nervous about coming, he thinks no one's going to turn up to his gigs. So if anyone on, you know, on the radio can write to him and write a fan letter, and I, I, I wrote to John Chibadura and said, man, I love your music, please come, I'd love to see you before. Isn't that nice? That's Whether or not he ever came, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see him. Uh, but someone you are keen on the music of, uh, lovely you subject. Good... Uh, John, no, you, really you want me to do that? I think there are cultural reasons why that maybe oh, isn't a good idea. <laughs> can you do Michael Jackson? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, I can't. What's that? What's that? What the fuck was that? You thought you could do? <laughs> that was a cat. No, I can't. I, don't, I think I'll stick to the ones I'm good at. <laughs> you can do that. If I do my Michael was... <laughs> Jackson ends up standing a bit like Rory Geller. Yeah. Uh, what is the uh, end of the morning? We put up in the hot air balloon. Um, yeah, maybe you should do it more Michael Jackson. Uh, I, I did stories in Africa, I did stories in townships as a joke, and then that whole, you know, the issues around the sensitivity around impersonations are, are real. But having done everyone else, like I wasn't going to be like, for my book, I will only be doing the person <laughs> the white character, which would be really odd. So I just, yeah. just, so yeah. I just did my best, and most people liked it, and a few people got a little bit angry, and, um, and so be it. It's all good. 